Hello there, welcome back to my channel. And in this particular video, we are gonna see how you can use Python to build backend APIs. Basically, whatever runs in a backend cloud servers, we are gonna use Python to build exactly the same. So we are gonna use a particular framework known as a Python Flask framework, through which we can build very lightweight backend applications. And it's very easy to get started really fast to develop backend applications using Python based on the Flask framework. So let's get started without wasting any time. So before we get into the entire code base, what I will do is walk you through, through the bare, uh, like bare skeleton code and see how it works initially. So obviously when you are getting started with Flask, you need to make sure you have downloaded the Flask package using the PIP package manager. So simply type pip install flask and once you press enter, okay, yeah, once you press enter, if it has not yet been downloaded, the package will be downloaded uh, into a computer and then you can get started. For now, what I'll do is comment out all the unnecessary portions. I am also not gonna, uh, fine. So as you can see, obviously I have to import Flask, initialize the Flask module and define a global route. Once I've initialized the Flask app and once I've defined the global app, I mean global route and written hello world or whatever you want, uh, let's say close world or whatever it is, simply just run app.run and that's it. You are good to get started. Nothing else is needed. Uh, I'm not going to, into the technical details as in how Flask works internally as that that is not the scope of this video. But what I will just showcase to you is how you can build a hello world application, do some operations on incoming data. And this video should be enough to get you started on building backend applications, at least up to a certain level. So let's get started. I'm going to clear the terminal and run this piece of code, Python app dot pi. So once this code is running, you will see it is hosted on your local server. That is 127.0.0.1 and the port it is hosted is port uh, 5000. So there are two ways how you can access it. You can either use your browser to access it, but I'm gonna uh, use Postman to access this and see how I'm able to access a global route. So let me bring up Postman on the screen zoom in a bit, expand this, click on send. So once I click on send, since it's a get request and with no routes defined, the global route, I'm getting the response as hello world, nothing else. It's that simple. Yes, and that's it, you're done. You're done with building a web server on Python with Flask. Well, that's not the case. Let's just try to complicate things a bit and bring in some spices to this code such that we can do more amazing stuffs. So, by the way, the amazing stuff that I'm mentioning is about simply calculating sum of two numbers, nothing else. We'll see that at a later point of time, how, how we can build more complicated applications or more complex applications. But this video is all about simplicity. So what I'll do is simply uncomment these lines of code for the first time, I've used the uncomment uh, shortcut correctly. Thanks to me. Good job. Anyways, so um, I have the global route, which is hello world. I have another route defined as sum, which will be used to calculate the sum. I have another route, which is used for getting the data and another for getting and a set of data. But for the time being, what I'm gonna do is simply keep this as commented out because I'm not interested in sum. What I'm interested in is how to handle the data. So um, let me go back to Postman. So when you're sending a GET request, we are defining a route and sending the GET request, right? What we want to know is how do we send some information in this request such that the server can process. So one way you can do this is by passing the query, I mean, passing the data as query parameters. So how you can define query parameters? 
simple way is firstly complete that route which is query okay i've already written it uh good for you so i don't have to type actually good for me so query params is the name of the route after that you need to give a question mark character and then mention keep on mentioning the queries that you are gonna send the query string so value underscore a let's say name is equals to a loop and keep on continuing let's say username is equals to a loop 171 and that's it nothing else now this is what we call as query parameters the entire url is known as a request url and these are query parameters and whatever is mentioned after the question mark sign is known as a query string so how does the python code access all these data points using the flask well the answer is simple it lies in the request module of the flask framework so in the request module there are various methods and there are various member variables that are associated with it through which we can get access to this data so for this i'm interested in the request url so what i'm gonna do is simply return the request url that i'm getting so how do you access it it will be simply request dot url and that's it nothing else clear python app dot pi go back to postman send it and i'm getting whatever url i'm sending or whatever url i'm triggering uh, triggering the request to the same is being written now i want to access the query string so for that the way how you do it simply request dot query underscore string that's it nothing else python app dot pi go back and it will just return whatever is mentioned over here that's it nothing else well now the next part of the code is or next part will be interesting to know we are getting the request string but how do i access this request values i mean how do i know which is the value of value underscore a name username and other the blah 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 so how do we access that data so for that let's write some piece of code so i'm gonna store those values value underscore a is equals to request dot and the uh, member member method i'm gonna access is args dot get and within parentheses we are gonna pass the name of the parameter in this case we are interested in getting all the parameters so let's just mention as value a and that is what we are gonna be sending i mean we are gonna capture so as a return i'm gonna send value a save it and rerun the code okay cool okay did i miss out something okay sorry sorry my bad so what i have done is essentially i have put up a comma where it should not have been a comma and a huge mistake uh on my part it will have it will be and so when you're passing multiple parameters i don't know what made me put up a comma sign but it's essentially and and that's how you concatenate multiple data points so if i'm sending this i'm gonna just get the value of a previously what was happening when i put up a comma it was considered this entire uh, uh entire value as the value of value underscore a and not just 45 so that was where the problem was there so i have to just put up as and and sorry on that uh just a simple typo i guess and that's how you obtain the request query parameters now if i just replace that with name uh here i'll just mention as name 
and here also I'll just mention as name save it send it I'll get the name value so that is how you get access to the request parameters uh, that is obtained uh, I mean that is being sent uh, or requested by the client now we are gonna use the same to calculate the sum that we have defined in operations.py it, it just takes two numbers returns integer value of the sum of those two numbers nothing else so let me uncomment this part of the code again the same mistake uncomment okay uncommented now I have what I need to do is obtain two values using the same concept and calculate the sum and return the sum so value a will be equals to request dot args dot get and here will be value a gonna copy the center line and paste it as value b <coughs> now i'm gonna mention as sum is equivalent to operations which is the name of the module that i've created dot sum and as parameters i'm gonna pass as value a and value b why is it showing this because i have commented the import statement and i'm gonna return the sum but since this can return only string type or json type so i need to type cast it to string so once uh, i have type casted it to string let me run this piece of code again and go back to postman value a and value b is equivalent to 10. so if everything goes right i should be getting 55 as a result okay there is an error the view function did not return a valid has returned none or end without a return statement oh yes because i've mentioned the wrong query i mean wrong route so for this the route is oops sum and here the resultant is 55 that is what it is so that is how you get access to the request parameters you calculate the sum perform some operations so in this case it is some in in your case it will be some complicated business logic and return the same to the client which is calling this api now we since we are done with get and i mean request parameters what we are gonna be interested in is how do you access post i mean whatever is being sent out uh, as a post request in the form of the post body we are interested to access that information and let's see how we can access that information so here if you have seen earlier that under this particular route i have mentioned that this method i mean get is the only method that will work on query parameters for some both get and post may work but here i have not handled any post so essentially if i send post i will get an internal server error but here in post params let me show you how to handle post and then we can implement the same over here as well that is if it is needed so what i'm gonna do whatever data that i'm sending over here that's value a and value b i'm gonna get that data perform some operations and return the value like whatever i've done in sum i'm gonna do the same over here as well so let's get started so how we're gonna access whatever is sent uh, as post before that let's see how do you send that data so let me select post and here you need to mention that data as a json so in this case it will be value underscore a let's say as 34 
comma and value underscore b as let's say 10 that is what we are gonna send and the route will be post params and not sum so now let's write the piece of code that is needed in order to execute this so to access the post data we we are gonna again use the request module of the flask framework so let's say params is equivalent to post sorry request dot json so what essentially is happening is that under request if i mention as dot json this json member uh, member variable contains the data that is being sent by the client as po i mean whatever data is being sent by the client as uh, under body will be accessible through this particular uh, member uh, member variable and that i'm gonna store it in params and in return i'm simply gonna pass out params so let me rerun this code python app.py send it and this is what i'm getting as written because whatever i'm sending over here i'm sending it back now how do we access this data uh, so whatever i mean request or json essentially sends a dictionary type object so this params is this params variable is a dictionary type object and we all know how to access data from a dictionary type object so value a will be equals to params of value a and simply like that it will be value b b and similarly sum is equivalent to operations dot sum value a comma value b and i'm gonna return str sum so what i've done is since it's a dictionary type object i have received value a value b uh sum which is uh, i've calculated sum which is under operations module value a comma value b and i'm returning the string type value uh, of the sum that i've calculated so i'm gonna rerun this piece of code go back to postman and send it and the result is the sum of value a and value b 34 plus 10 as 44 so that is how simple as it can get when it comes to python and flask uh, flask framework to develop backend apis i hope you could get some information through this video if not well i'll try to improve and if yes do provide the thumbs up click on that uh, on that button that is located below the video on the right side uh, of uh, from your side so uh, please do provide some feedback because that really motivates me to create more videos uh, because i just started creating these tech videos and uh, getting simple motivation getting simple subscribes getting some comments some likes does really motivate me to create more uh, cool videos uh, so my topic that i am gonna be focusing on uh, in all of these videos will be primarily based on iot python node.js computer vision ai cloud computing and stuff pretty much a wide spectrum of technologies i'm gonna cover and i hope that these videos are useful and you're able to gain some insight if not all at least to get you started so thanks again for watching this video and i hope you have a great day ahead and Thanks again. See you in the next video. Thank you.